So you join me at the start of a new year and um, actually it's the start of a new campaign for me. I'm here at a, uh, a very special lake. I've actually been a member of this, uh, this lake since 2015. Haven't really fished it a lot to be honest. Um, it's quite special to me though because this is where I actually started my vlogs from. And this is where I actually started the Carpet Connection. So um, yeah, it's quite a special place and it's quite a beautiful lake as well. So we're in the middle of January now and uh, I thought there'd no better time to start my uh, full-on campaign on Red House than in the winter. Um, I haven't actually got anywhere else to fish this year. Uh, all my other tickets have run out now so I thought uh, yeah I'd give it a, uh, a really good go on Red House this year and uh, it's also notoriously difficult on here as well at the best of times so uh, to get a nice fish out of here in the winter would be a bonus. And also I wanted to get down here in the winter as well so uh, if I did start seeing fish show um, I could kind of like get some some idea of where what areas they were populating and uh, where the fish like to be uh, not only in the winter months but obviously uh, when the lake starts waking up in the spring as well um, I can get some sort of idea of where the fish are going to be and also it's nice just to get down there when there's not a lot of people about so uh, I can start learning the lake a little bit better and uh, just have a little bit of a lead around and, and what have you. So I got here yesterday about 1.30 and uh, decided to go and have a really good walk around the lake. Uh, it's been a while since I've been down here so I thought I'd just go and have a look around and get my bearings again. Uh, it was very, very windy. Um, we were on the edge of a, a big, really big storm so uh, it wasn't actually raining but yeah, that was very, very windy. And I was quite surprised to see that the point was actually free. Um, so I quickly ran back to the car, grabbed a bucket and uh, put it in the point, it's a very popular swim and it's not very often you get here and the point is actually free so uh, yeah I decided to st uh, stake my claim and then uh, just basically quickly ran back to the car again, got all my gear. So I decided to get the lead and rod out and uh, have a little bit of a lead round in the swim. Um, basically I wanted to find the bottom of the bar and just where it teeters off onto the flat bottom. So uh, yeah, I managed to find that. That was in about 12 foot of, foot of water. And then I just moved out to basically to the left and had a little bit of a little, little bit of a lead around out there and managed to find a spot about 16 wraps out. Uh, a couple of gravel humps. And uh, so I thought this would be a good place to start. So on this session, I'm just going to fish solid bags. Um, I'm not really going to put a lot of bait out. Uh, I just basically want to put a little little mouthful uh, there for the fish to come across if they're about. And um, yeah, I don't really want to be wasting too much bait. I don't think they're going to be a hard, feeding hard this time of year. Um, also with solid bags as well, I can keep them tied up in the bucket so I can just keep every hour, just keep bringing the rods in, keep dotting uh, the solid bags about. And especially if I see anything, I can then uh, put a solid bag straight on top of them and uh, hopefully get myself a bite. So I already had a few bags tied up in my bucket, so um, yeah, I sort of decided to put them on very easy. They just loop to loop uh, using our lead free leaders. They just loop to loop straight onto my main line. And uh, I'm actually using braid main line at the moment. Um, you're allowed to use braid on here. And uh, even though the bottom's quite featureless, well, I say featureless, there are some gravel bars and gravel humps. Um, there's not actually many snags in the lake, uh, but because of the gravel bars and the gravel humps, um, I'm actually going to be using braid because I just want that little bit of extra abrasion resistance just in case I do get into a fish. I'm also going to be starting the new year with um, a nice little bit, bit of a giveaway, uh, a nice little solid bag bundle. Uh, I'll leave a list in the description of what you can actually win. 
um, which is basically some pellets and some leaders and some hook links and what have you. So yeah, nice little giveaway. And uh, what I'll do is I'll tell you a bit later on in the vlog how you can actually win that. But yeah, by the time I'd got everything set up and got all the rods and everything out, it was um, it was starting to get dark. So uh, yeah, I decided to put the, uh, the cameras and everything away and uh, had something to eat, had a nice cup of coffee, and then um, yeah, decided to get a bit of an early night ready for the next day. now it was lovely this morning it came out really nice it got really sunny and the water was dead flat but um yes yeah, it's, uh, it's got over really overcast now and gone really cold so and the wind's changed it's changed um, from a northwesterly and it's changed to a southwesterly so it's now blowing all the way down to that end of the lake but yeah what a beautiful place I've forgotten how much I enjoy being here, to be honest, especially in the mornings. There always seems to be a really nice sunrise or sunsets on this lake for some reason. But yeah, glad to be back on Red House. I'm really going to get my teeth stuck into here this year. And uh, it's just something I've never really done over the last years. I've, like I said, I've been on here since the, well, 2015 I joined and uh, done a handful of sessions on here and a handful of vlogs on here. But this is the sort of place you really need to be getting your teeth into. You really need to spend, be spending time on here. And uh, I think this is the year for me. So uh, I'm going to crack on with it. Like I said earlier, me and Harley, when we went down to a little uh, park lake in Derbyshire a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago. Um, we just did a quick night there. And uh, I managed to winkle a couple of fish out, a nice common. I think it went about, I didn't bother weighing it, about 17, 18 pound. And I had a nice little mirror as well. And uh, yeah, we're basically just down there for solid bag fishing. Well, I was anyway. And uh, yeah, my tactic worked nicely. I was just dotting, dotting the rods about every hour, just bringing them in and just moving about different spots. And there's uh, these like little dot islands in the middle of the lake. So I was just fishing to those as well. And uh, yeah, managed a couple of bites after a couple of hours of being there. And uh, the tactic worked well, I think. Um, Harley tried a bit of a different tactic. He uh, just spotted a load of particle out. And uh, yeah, he just got plagued by bream. So um, yeah, not the best session for him, but at least he had a bend in his rod. Um, so yeah, I've employed the same tactic on this session, really. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just moving the solid bags about, just moving them around the swim. Um, I haven't really seen a lot. So basically I'm just gonna make, just keep moving them around. I'm gonna keep one up the, uh, up the side of the gravel bar there. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep moving the solid bags about and uh, see if we can get a fish on the same tactic. 
Um, JB Pearl, it's a shame about JB Pearl really. Um, I was really getting stuck into there. Um, I started to do quite well towards the end of the year, started getting a swim going. Um, had some nice fish, I had that nice football common and uh, that big fat belly common I had. And, uh, or the big fat belly mirror I should say. And also that nice, uh, nice scaly mirror I had as well. That was quite nice and a couple of other fish I had. Um, but yeah, just a shame really that they've had to put it up for sale, but I fully understand why they've had to do it. And uh, I just hope the club uh, remains on there. Uh, but I need to know what I'm doing this year, so I've decided not to rejoin there. And uh, perhaps in a few years time, if that does get sorted out and uh, somebody else takes it over, um, I perhaps might get back on there again. But yeah, I think what I'm gonna do, this is the year for me to stay on Red House and uh, get my teeth stuck into here. Hopefully get one of those big commons, that'd be nice. But anything I do at the moment really. So yeah, beautiful lake. When I first started doing my vlogs from here, when I first started fishing there, I basically fished over the corner there. There's like a, a like beach swim over there. Um, that's basically the last swim on that bank up there. Um, that's where I did my first vlog from over there. And then basically you come down here, this is where the shallows are over there. So it comes out about 20 to 30 yards and then it drops down to about 16 foot which really, this time of year, um, probably a good bet to be over there, to be honest. Um, that's where I had a lot of success on my syndicate was on a, on a, on a, a drop off like that on the shallows and then it just dropped down and the fish seemed just to patrol up and down it. So um, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do, next time I come down, I'm gonna start fishing over that side again because there are some really nice swims over there as well and uh, I want to try and find an area where not a lot of people are going to and that is quite a hike, I mean to get up to there you've got to get all the way from the bottom there and you've got to go all the way up and uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to do that so I think my area I'm going to concentrate on is just be up there um, I came down, last time I fished I fished over there and basically the gravel bar goes all the way up from here um, you've got basically the swim over there and the gravel bar just goes along and goes straight out there uh, it kicks off to the to the right a little bit. It goes along and then it just kicks off to the left and goes all the way down to the end of the lake or all the way down to about two thirds of the way down. And then it just, just, just levels down and peters off. Um, but you've still got a nice big shallow area all the way up there. And uh, yeah, there's a bit over there they call Ambush Alley because I think it's about 50 yard chuck, I think between the, the swim and the gravel bar. So they call it Ambush Alley. Um, in the summertime, when the water's low, you can actually see the top of the gravel bar sticking out. And uh, I think now that's probably only about a foot, two foot under the water. So, um, But what they've actually done, they've dug a bit out here so you can't actually walk out because people were walking out and, and uh, dropping their baits just right out to the end. Um, but they actually got a digger in here, I think, just dug a bit out there. And uh, yeah, so you can't actually get along there now. But yeah, you've got a nice area up there. There's a nice bank up the top there as well, which is quite nice. And um, you can actually just park your car right up there and you can just, it's just a short barrow along there. And in that area all out there, there's like um, gravel humps. And I think they're about eight foot below the surface. And then it drops down to like 16 foot between them. So a lot of plateaus out there. Um, in a few of my vlogs that I did from here, I actually fished a swim over there. Um, that's quite a nice little swim and you've got all this bay here, you can fish, nice margin along there. Um, it's a little bit snaggy along that margin, but it does actually just drop right down to about 10 foot there, that margin. Um, so that's quite a nice margin. And then obviously you've got, at the other end of the lake there, you've got some nice swims along there. And it's quite accessible, do you know what I mean? There's not really a lot of, uh, a lot of barrow work. Like I say, the main barrow push is going to be up that one there, but I'm lucky I've got a power port, so that's not really going to affect me. And then you've got this nice little bay just around the corner here just goes around the corner here and there's actually a little plateau in here as well, a little gravel plateau. And uh, you've got some nice little swims there. And I think the deepest part of the lake is actually down there, it's about 27 foot. But all out here, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite deep out here. Like I say, I think it averages about 16 foot, so. Yeah. Be interesting to know how many fish are actually in here. Nobody really knows, I don't think. Uh, I'm gonna try and get down here when they're spawning and uh, hopefully have a look then. Give me some sort of idea of what fish are in here. People say 150, not really sure about that. Um, but yeah, they are in here. And what I've seen that are in here, there are some nice fish in here, some old crusty old things as well. 
uh, but those uh, two nice big commons really appeal to me. So yeah, I'm going to try my hardest this year to get a fish out of here and uh, hopefully get some nice films done as well. So I think what I'm going to do now, it's got a bit chilly. I'm going to um, make myself a nice brew and I'm going to sit and watch the water for a bit. See if I can actually see something. I've been quite busy all morning with doing the filming and what have you and redoing the rods and whatever, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get myself a brew, I'm going to chill out for a bit, and uh, hopefully I'll get a fish. So this is my little solid bag bucket that I use and uh, yeah, it's just one of the Ridge Monkey ones, one of the new, new little two and a half litre ones I think they are and basically you've got a lid for the top and then inside you've got a lid for the compartment on there just, just keep my solid bags in there I've got some packs of the uh, spare packs of solid bag leaders in there some PVA tape, some hook links in there scissors, leads and some spare rigs and everything in there as well in the bottom, got me pure muscle powder, your pineapple dumbbell pop ups. In there, I've just got some uh, Monster Red that I've done in a blender that I like to put in my solid bags, and uh, some of the edge pellet as well from Baitworks. This is a new edge pellet, and that's uh, pretty good stuff to be honest. They're all little different sizes in there, and uh, they're perfect for solid bags because basically. You want to be able to get the smaller particles as you can in your solid bags so uh, you don't get as much air in there. So yeah, that's uh, the spot on for solid bags. So yeah, that's my little solid bag bucket. And uh, like I say, this is the little Ridge Monkey one. And uh, they're pretty good for just leaving in the car. And uh, if you ever do decide that you want to do some solid bag fishing, all you've do, got to do is get it out and you're sorted. So I've just been sat here tying up a few solid bags and uh, I thought I'd just quickly go through my solid bag setup that I use. Uh, it's probably no different than anybody else really to be honest. Um, so basically it's just one of the Baitworks solid bags there and in the bottom I use, um, I just put a bit of the edge pellet in there, um, just, just about a quarter of an inch in the bottom. Then I'll just lay the hook link and the hook uh, nice, and, nice and evenly along the, on top of that pellet making sure there's no tangles and uh, then I'll just put a bit more of the edge pellet on top. And in there you can see um, I've got some Monster Red and that's actually been blended in a blender. That's just the boily. And I'll just take it out, just put it in a blender and that makes it nice and fine. Um, just a little bit of something extra in there, a little bit of extra attraction. So I'll just put a bit of that on top. Uh, and then I'll just tamper that down a little bit with the lead. And then, uh, yeah, just put a bit more of the edge pellet on top of there. And I usually only fill the, the bags up to about two thirds full. I don't really want to go to the top of the bag. Um, like I say, it's just a nice little mouthful there, um, just for the fish. I don't want to put too much bait in. Then what I'll do is I'll just twist the top of the bag around that tail rubber, but I don't try to squeeze it too much because I don't want to bring that tail rubber off the uh, the stem that goes through the middle of the lead. So I'll just twist that round, and then just using some PVA tape, I'll just uh, wrap that around the top a few times, and then just tie that off with just a simple granny knot, a few few granny knots on there. Trim that up nice and neatly. Then what I do is I just get a bait drill and I'll just uh, stab the bag a few times. Uh, that just helps it get nice and compact and uh, so you can squeeze all the air out. And then finally I'll just uh, lick and stick the corners, make that nice and streamlined. And yeah, that'll, uh, that'll punt out quite a way, that will. So uh, that's, my, that's my solid bag. And actually inside there, this is the rig that I'm using. Just get that focused in. So basically I've got an 8mm pineapple dumbbell pop-up on there and that's going down to a size 6 hook and on there you've got uh, just a piece of shrink tube on there just to uh, trap the hair to the shank of the hook and just a little shrink tube kicker on there as well. Uh, I've got a little, little uh, shot on there and the reason I use a shot is because you've got it in a bag um, you're moving it about quite a bit. Uh, if you put putty on there, it might might move about or might come off um, with just a shot on there. Um, I guarantee that'll stay on there really. 
and plus that's going to be buried in the pellet anyway once that solid bag melts um, hopefully this will just come up through the pellet and that'll just sit there nicely so a uh, little shot on there just to balance the pop-up going down I've got about four inches of our uh, link uncoated hook link uh, this is the 15 pound the black brown and black version and um, yeah it's ideal for solid bags it's really supple but it's really strong it is actually Kevlar infused so uh, yeah it's very strong and very abrasion resistant I've got, just got a little three ounce lead there and that's going down to one of our uh, 12 inch solid bag leaders and as you can see on there it's just a little bit of a tail rubber on there just to cover the top of the stem up um, they do come in a inline drop off version um, so if you wanted to drop the lead every time they do come in an inline drop off version um, but I'm just using the inline version because uh, there's no weed and um, there's not really any snags out there so I don't really want to be dropping the lead every time um, but if I do crack off it will actually come out of there and it will drop the lead um, so it's quite a safe uh, quite a safe rig so yeah that's uh, that's my little solid bag set up that's the uh, how I'm fishing this session and uh, yes yeah, starting to brighten up a little bit the uh, I can see a bit of blue sky over the back there so uh, I think what I might do now is just bring the rods in again and um, put some fresh bags on and uh, yeah just put them out on uh, just dot them around the swim a little bit haven't actually seen a lot to uh, fish to at the moment so um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Just get the uh, rods in again, put some fresh bags on and uh, get them back out in the swim again. Well, it's dark now, and uh, yeah, it's gone pretty cold. I think it dropped down to about two degrees today, and I think it's getting a bit colder than that now, so we're probably gonna get a quite, a, quite a bad frost in the night. But yeah, that's gonna be nice to wake up to a frosty morning again. Uh, had my tea, redone the rods, put three fresh solid bags on, and uh, the right-hand rod and the middle rod, I've just moved them just off the spots a little bit that I had them before. And the left-hand rod, I was actually getting liners on that earlier, so basically I'll put a fresh bag on that one as well, and I've moved it a couple of rod lengths closer. So hopefully a fresh bag out there might entice a, entice a bite. But yes, uh, I'm the only one on, I think, tonight. Sunday night, middle of winter, and uh, yeah, I'm the only one on Red House. So it's over a good thing, or somebody's telling me something. But yeah, I'm enjoying being here, and I forgot how, how much I enjoy being on Red House, to be honest. And now I'm really looking forward to spending a bit more time on here throughout the year now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put the cameras away, put the lights away, and uh, yeah, get in my bag and get an early night. So hopefully we'll have a fish in the night. If not, I'm going to get up really early in the morning and uh, keep my eyes out for signs of fish. And if I see anything, then I'll just cast to them. So uh, if I don't see you in the night, I'll see you in the morning.
Well, good morning. Calm after the storm. But there she is, there's Red House in all her glory. Looking beautiful as ever. But yeah, it was an absolutely crazy night last night. And uh, I don't mean I had loads of fish either, I wish it was. But yeah, as soon as I put the cameras away and put the lights off, I, uh, I got into my bed, laid there for a little while and the wind started picking up. And uh, I think it started gusting to about 40 mile an hour. And the barrel blew over twice, so I had to get out and uh, peg the brolly down again because I'd only pegged it down quite lightly. So yeah, that nearly blew away. And I think it rained for about five hours solid. So yeah, quite mental. Buzzers were going all night with the bobbins just moving up and down in the wind. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was mad. So, uh, but yeah, no fish to report. Kind of like what I expected, to be honest, middle of January on Red House. And uh, I told a few people I was coming on here to start my, my campaign in January and they said they must be mad, but I want to see the lake wake up. I want to see it fish it all through all four seasons. And uh, yeah, I want to see the lake wake up. So if I do start seeing fish shows somewhere, I know, uh, I know the areas to start targeting. I think next time I come, I'm going to go over the other side and uh, yeah, I'm going to make a start over there. But yeah, new year, new campaign, really looking forward to it. It's really lit my fire now to come down on Red House and get on here. Um, I will be fishing another couple of other places throughout the year, perhaps go to some day ticket waters. And uh, I've still got my trip to Belgium in April as well, which I'm uh, now organizing. So hopefully COVID uh, won't put a pay to that. I'm getting myself a new van as well. So um, that'll make it a little bit easier. But yeah, there she is. Still got the rods out. Just got to put the rods away. Everything else is on the barra. And I've got to get home quite early this morning, so. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. So yeah, thanks again for watching. And uh, don't forget, I'm giving away that nice little solid bag bundle. So uh, I'll leave a list in the description of this video so you can go down and check out what you can win. And uh, all you got to do is just leave a comment on this video. So all you got to do, comment, thumbs up, uh, as long as it's nice and tasteful. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and um, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video that will just give you a little bit of a ping, so you'll know this up there on YouTube. And also our Instagram as well, it's going quite, quite well at the moment. Um, I've been uploading some really cool pictures regularly, so uh, I think we've got 2,000 followers, over, over, well, over 2,000 followers now. So um, if you're on Instagram, go over there, it's at ACARP Connection, and give us a follow. And if you upload any pictures, just hashtag them as well, ACARP Connection. And uh, our Facebook group as well, that's uh, A Carpet Connection. We've got about 1,500 members on there now, so uh, that's picking up quite nicely. So yeah, really enjoyed it. A couple of nights on Red House. Uh, kind of like knew I was gonna blank before I got here, but um, there's always that chance. So yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this short vlog. And uh, I look forward to putting some more out from here now. So until next time, be lucky.